Hello Internet Land. Wasted potential 616. Um back again. Uh, my internet's still down. Um so I thought and I don't know when I'm gonna be able to um get, get this uh, video up, so I thought for a change of pace I'd uh, do a review of a of an old issue, a classic issue. And uh, it's one of my favourite Wolverine stories. And uh, it takes place in um X X Men two hundred and five, um, and as I say, it's one of my. I think it's one of the best Wolverine stories that's been done. Um, now it's written by Chris Claremont, obviously. This was during the click of Chris Claremont, yes, of the X Men, and um, illustrated, <coughs> excuse me, by this um, amazing artist um, Barry Winter Smith, who. Um, it's quite synonymous with Wolverine, um, probably because he, um, you may or may not know this, he did, um, uh, um, the Weapon X storyline, which was the, uh, kind of the first attempt to do an, uh, an origin story of Wolverine, um, at least in regards to the, well, yeah, in regards to the Weapon X, um, aspect of his character. Um, and how he got his claws and what now. Um, now that storyline has been tweaked and changed, and you know, all some of his memory implants, blah, blah, blah. I will have to do a review of that one day because that is an amazing, amazing story. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, Barry Winsor Smith. Um, and he is just an amazing artist. Um, he's, um, a very detailed artist um, with a very distinct uh, style. Um, uh, any kind of uh, comparisons I think I can make are to uh, maybe uh, John Meter Senior um, uh, or Junior, um, both for that matter. Um, but yes, a, a very good, uh, a, a brilliant artist. Anyway, let's explain the story. Um, it starts off with um, Lady Deathstrike um, being created. Now this character, Yuriko, um, had appeared before in Daredevil, I believe, and also as Lady Deathstrike, but not the cybernetic version, because she's an android, um, in an issue of Alpha Flight. And she's after Wolverine because her father came up with the, the adamantium bonding process and she feels that if she gets Wolverine she can sort of um, regain her father's honour. Um, I mean, and it starts off brilliant as, as well. And we're inside her mind at the moment, uh, Lady Deathstrike's mind is just being uh, changed into um, into a cyborg and just you know it goes through what she's going through the pain the anguish and uh, what she's thinking about is she's being changed into this you know new being um, and she's being changed by spiral you know you may know the character a six armed um, character who was sort of like a slave to Mojo from the Mojoverse and also was a character in the um, Capcom um, games that beat him up games. Uh, And uh, in the body shop, uh, which has been sort of used before in the X Men universe, I mean, that's how Psylocke was um, changed, and um, among other characters. Um, also, she's accompanied by um, these uh, uh, sort of commando guys that would later join the Reavers, um, X Men villains, cybernetic X Men villains, um, and they used to be uh, members of the Hellfire Club. They were like basically. The, the cannon fodder um, troops of the uh, Hellfire Club, and uh, they were messed up by Wolverine um, in um, Uncanny X Men 133, uh, which was a, a, a classic, classic issue part of the classic storyline, um, the Dark Phoenix, Phoenix Saga. Um, and I always thought these characters were quite cool because I think it was the first time. Um, a writer at all used, you know, cannon for the characters, you know, kind of like, you know, the Hydra troops, the AIM troops, you know, they just get their ass kicked by superheroes, you never see them again. But you got to see what happened to these characters afterwards. Um, as it, you know, they appeared in New Mutants, 
early Newton Newtons issue after the, after the, what happened to them with Wolverine. And as I say, they appeared in this. They later joined the Reavers. Um, it's just cool to see these, uh, those types of characters progressed, you know. Anyway, um, and it's established that they're sent after Wolverine. Anyway, completely changes pace, and we were introduced to Katie Powers, or Power, um, the uh, Energizer from uh, the Power Pack group, which is a, um, a group of kids. It's like a children's uh, superhero group, there they are. Advertisement in the back with Spidey. Um, you know, the mates of a pit to appeal to children. Now, them in a crossover with the X Men, it's been done before, is how could that be one of the best Wolverine stories? Well, let me explain. Um, most of this takes place from her point of view. Just trying to keep an eye on the time, I don't want to go over. Um, and uh, she's established, you know, she's a little girl, out. Um, you know, she's going to go to a carol concert or something. Then there's a big blizzard, and during this blizzard, um, she sees some you know, commandos rush by her. And then she sees Wolverine, who is being chased by her. There's this brilliant scene, this brilliant page, when like she first sees him. Now look at the detail, they're amazing. And oh yes, the story is called Wounded Wolf. How appropriate! Um, and uh, and then, as I make, I want to say this whole issue takes place during a blizzard, which just you know speaks volumes about um, Barry, Mr. Smith's uh, art, you know art, artwork and attention to detail, the effort he puts in. Um, you know, all those individual sort of you know little bits of snow. And he also puts loads of detail in the character as well. You know, she encounters Wolverine. He's fucked up. A fight is already taking place off panel, and he's hurt bad. He does—he's not even speaking. He's, he's like a wounded animal. He's just working on pure instinct, you know. And uh, just, and a, a brilliant chase scene ensues. And she's not even—you know—she's scared. She's not even sure about Wolverine, and she overcomes her fear. You know, and, and helps him out, and that itself is a nice little story within this. You know, her overcoming her fear, and um, just really good stuff. Um, there's a brilliant scene where she manages to get him into a cab, trying to get him to a hospital, and um, on pure instinct, Wolverine realizes a missile coming towards the car, cuts open the door, chucks her out. And uh, saves the driver as well. Unfortunately, he gets caught in the camp but runs out in flames. Um, she, you know, he's howling like an animal. She's petrified. He's trying to come to his senses. He's trying to remember who he is. And, um, and she sort of helps him through it. And there's a you know, nice aspect of the story, some good dialogue. Anyway, he eventually remembers who he is. And that's when the story gets real good. Anyway, I'm going to stop there because I want to go over and wait for part two. Okay.